Hello, I've already done a video on King, Rook and Bishop versus King and Rook and this type of ending is most instructive. The one in front of us is, yet again, courtesy of Susan Polgar, where white is to play and win. As in the video immediately prior to this one, it's useful in such positions to eliminate legal moves and whittle it down as far as possible. Here, we'll keep the white rook controlling the b-line. And although bishop c4 check is tempting, and it does happen, it's a little too soon on move one. And so a king move, indeed a typical waiting move, proves to be the order of things. But where to? King c2. is open to the objection that black can play rook c5 check and upset the plan down the a line which of course is what white is eyeing over eventually to try and checkmate down the a line Can you see the key move for white? Just take a good look at it. It's not that easy to find. Although it's probably easier now that I've eliminated king c2. Right, well, congrats to those who found it. It is king c3, exclamation point. No, it's not in opposition to the king, but it's better placed here, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Now, in this position, white is threatening to mate in two moves by rook a8, check. And so, should the king come here, then check, interposes, checkmate. Should the king come here, same result, because the king is controlling these three squares and the bishop is controlling this. So what that means is, after one king c3, neither of these legal king moves is of any good. So it must be a rook move. There are in fact two and only two defensive moves with the black rook. Let's look at the first one. Rook a5. This is designed to stop, of course, rook a8. So how does white respond? It looks as though black has put paid to any attempt by white to give checkmate down the a-line. Well, he hasn't. Again, congratulations to anyone who's found it. Now we play bishop c4, yes, now is the right time. So this time black does have to move his king. He has two replies. If he plays here, king a3, white plays here. And there is nothing that black can do in that position to stop this on the next move. If he moves his king here, like that, then it's mate because the bishop and the king are doing a superb job. He can't move his king anywhere else because the bishop's covering here and the rook's covering the beeline. If he moves the rook anywhere, it's still rook a1 mate. So that just does not work.
So that's after king c3, rook a5, bishop c4 check. So instead of here, try here. Surely that's stopping him. We can't come to b1 now, can he? Well, no, he can't. So find the waiting move for white. Well done to those who found it. Rook d8. This time we switch our attention down here. It's the supreme waiting move once again. And rook d1 mate cannot be prevented. Again, because the king is controlling these key squares and here. Should he play here? It's rook d1 mate. Alternatively, and probably a few of you have noticed this, yes, he can go check here, rook a3. But then the bishop comes in. Now white is threatening mate on the move here. Again, if he moves his king here, it's just rook d1 mate. So to be sure, yes, he can take the, the bishop. And you take it back. He only has one move then. And now the supreme opposition is, can be seen and black can do nothing. So to revert to the original position. Which is here. Okay, so king c3. I did say there are two rook moves and we've tried rook to there to cut off the o-line. What about this time? Rook c5 check. How do you reply to that? Well, you do the same. You play bishop c4 check. And this explains why one king c2, to which I referred to earlier, like this, instead of that, it doesn't work because the white king is needed on c3 to protect c4. So moving there, when he checks, bishop, it covers it admirably. So there's no problem there. And now, black is in check. So, yes, he can give up his rook, but as I'll explain later to summarize on this, a king and a rook against a king is an easy win. So he doesn't really want to do that. So if he plays king a3, rook a8 check. And then he has to interpose and his mate, because again, the king and the bishop are doing an admirable job here. That's perfect. No problem at all. King c3, rook c5 check, bishop c4 check. So instead of king a3, what about king a1? How does white respond to that? Well, here we go again. Rook d8. As can be seen, the bishop is working superbly here to stop black from going to a2. And so it's like the previous variation, black cannot stop rook d1, mate, if he moves the king here. Then it's a simple matter just to bring the rook down and mate him on d1. And then again the bishop covering a2, the king doing the job elsewhere. And naturally, just building on what I said, I've made this point elsewhere many times. Black can give up his rook for white's bishop, but then king and rook against king would be an automatic loss for black. So I think that uh, wraps that one up. I trust this one went down well. And keep watching for further chess studies. And goodbye for now.